What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tony D2 Wild checking in once again back with the bang of the day, guys. And today we're gonna be bringing you guys my first looks, impressions, unboxing, first mag, all the above of the Springfield Armory Echelon. If you got a minute, make sure you guys and girls are following me over on Instagram at Two Wild Guns. I will leave a link down below in the description. And on every video, I make a blog post about the build or gun that I'm talking about. That is the best way that you guys and girls can support my channel by clicking the link down below to my personal website, TonyD2Wild.com, where I talk about these specific guns on this channel. You click on that link, you can see the optic, you can see the light, you can see everything that's been put on the gun. And if you have any questions, more than likely the answers will be there. So check out my links down below in the description and I wanna say thank you for supporting my channel. I hope everybody's had a great week so far, man. Today we have our hands on the brand new Springfield Armory Echelon. Definitely a couple of reviews out there, but not a too wild review, you feel what I'm saying? Not a too wild first mag or impression. And today we got that for you guys and girls. I wanna give a shout out to Springfield because they did send this out to me, so disclaimer, but I did ask for it. I wanted to get my hands on the Echelon and see what the fuss was about. And not only the Echelon, but the brand new threaded Echelon that now, you know, can support a suppressor and has the three dot tritium sights. So this is slightly different than the original one that had the U-notch on it and it was flush and not threaded, you know, barrel. This is a 5.28 inch barrel on it. And for the most part, the overall size, I mean, it is a duty gun. This is a full size duty gun that Springfield has brought out. And for the most part, it's, it's bigger, but it's not, like oversized you feel me this is no it's not that much different than my x carry that i got with my p320 first things first though i got it just went straight to the range after i did all the paperwork shot it without the sights and all this and i can't lie it shot phenomenally definitely it being of a duty gun a bigger gun less recoil was felt overall though just the grip the grip the grip the grip the grip this is by far one of the best grips personally for me that I've ever shot on any handgun out there, okay? Glock 19, P320, Beretta. I love all those different types of guns out there, right? But there's something about the grip when I grabbed onto this gun that just forms in my hand and gives me the ability to have a great grip on the gun. A better grip will, you know, help mitigate that recoil and have you shoot the gun flatter. So whatever they did, this shape, which is definitely like different and odd than a typical grip you usually see, that is sometimes for the most part pretty straight. It has some different type of shape to it. They do come with different back plates as well. So that could also change if you want a bigger or smaller sizes. But also this gun is a modular gun, which comes with a cog system, a central operating group, and which is similar to what, you know, SIG is doing with the P320, but it's actually an operating group that you can take out and move to another grip module that they offer, which is three different ones. I think a small, a medium, and a large. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know which one this one is, but this one, in my opinion, whatever it is, it, it fits me perfectly. It's, it's fine. It does come with a 17 round mag as well as a 20 round mag. So the 20 round sticks out a little bit more than the 17, which is, you know, this one a little bit more flush. Of course, this is a striker fire pistol and it's done a phenomenal job being that. I really like though the serrations on the front as well on the back so you can grab it from the front or you can grab it from the back, whichever you prefer to, you know, rack that gun back and get the job done. It also has an oversized trigger so that if you're someone that's using gloves as stated as a duty weapon, they want you to have that ability to use your gloves and not get your fingers caught. So that's why they gave you that oversized trigger guard. The gun is also pretty ambidextrous for it has a slide stop here as well as a slide stop here and mag release on this side as well as on this side. So left or right-handed, it's pretty good to go for if you're left or right-handed. There's also a lot of textured indexing points. So you can know where to rest your fingers and thumbs when shooting this. One right here, for instance, and you know, one right here. If you wanna hold it, check it out. It's just, it's just an overall solid setup for you to get a great grip on that gun. And they're using an adaptive grip texture, which is very close to what 
is featured on the Hellcat, but I can definitely tell there's some differences there. But it's set up to where there's texture that has like different levels of height. So when you grab it loosely, you know, you got a good texture, but the deeper you go, the more pressure you apply, the more your hand goes into the deeper grooves of that texture, giving you a more aggressive grip to hold it even more firm. So something very new, something very different, but something that works. Of course, it comes in your typical Springfield Armory box. You have also, which is the Viz Optics system, which allows you to put over 30 different optics on the gun. Me personally, right now, we're running a Hollow Sun 407 with no issue whatsoever. I think you will have to get a plate though, however, for like an acro or something of that matter. You have the typical carrying case, and then you have your accessories would come with an additional mag, as well as the two additional back straps. But as I stated before, I kind of like the one that they just already gave me. But as far as like the shooting goes, right? The overall shooting experience. I shot this very, very well, just straight out the box. Took it out to about 15 yards, shot it a little bit, and took it out to 25, shot it. I'm not the best pistol shooter at the end of the day. It's something I'm still trying to get better and better and better. I end up shooting low left, and I'm trying to get that because what a lot of it is at the end of the day is the anticipation of the recoil. I feel like that's what's causing it, or even the trigger pull that's causing the issue. But speaking of trigger pulls, right? This is a very solid trigger pull, very close to how the Hellcat feels in my opinion. You have that trigger safety that you have to press down to activate and then you got some mush. And then you have the wall and then boom. Here's a reset. Right there. So a really, really close reset. But for it being that of, you know, a full duty size pistol, I definitely noticed the differences in recoil. And I wish I had a Glock 17 to compare it to because that would be what I would say it is more in size close to. But overall, man, it shot pretty flat. I was able just to keep it on, just on target at the end of the day. And to give you guys a comparison of size, here's a quick comparison of, you know, a Shadow Systems MR920, which is, you know, pretty much a Glock 19 to the Echelon. There's definitely some differences because of this being, of course, a full size duty gun. And this is more of a compact, subcompact, whatever you want to call it when it comes to the shadow system. So it is a bigger gun. It is not something that you would typically want to carry for concealment, but you could carry for outside the waistband. And maybe you can get away with conceal carrying it. However, with the threaded barrel, I want to put a suppressor on here and go to work. So the barrel itself has a one to 10 twist rate, by the way. And I want to see if I need a piston or if I can just direct thread my R9 to it. So we're definitely going to be checking that out. It looks like it might be able to work, but We'll find out. So I really like what they did with this overall, and it's a pretty affordable gun. I think MSRP is around $770 like right, right now, and it may go down over time, so just stay tuned and you know keep your eyes on it. But Springfield definitely did their thing when they made this bad boy right here. So let me know you guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section if you have any questions, anything you would like for me to test, and I'll make sure to follow up with you guys and girls on that on the next video. But yeah, man, Springfield Armory, Echelon, A1, Steak Sauce. I'm out. I love y'all. Peace.